Well, in just over a month, gill net fishing for wild barramundi in North Queensland will end. And it will become illegal from the start of next year after the United Nations demanded a ban be put in place to stop the Great Barrier Reef, it says, from joining the endanger list. Now, for those who don't know, I certainly didn't, but do now. Gill net fishing is a fishing method that uses gill nets, vertical panels of netting that hang from a line with floaters that hold the line on the surface of the water. Now, it's via this method that wild barramundi are caught in North Queensland. And although the UN and Greenies say this fishing method is hurting the reef, there's no credible scientific evidence showing how an annual catch of around 200 tonnes of wild barra in onshore waters could damage the reef. Given that two-thirds of our wild barramundi is caught in these Queensland waters, that means wild barramundi will soon be priced out of the reach of most consumers and we'll have to rely on farmed or imported barra instead. Joining me now to discuss this, father and daughter fishermen from North Queensland, Neil and Sienna Green. I am indebted to you both for coming on the show. I think, Neil, this is a huge story. Take us through what this means for your industry and for consumers. Well, Peter, for our industry, it's just absolutely devastating. It's going to shut us down. And I'd have to go back to the 5th of June when we were notified via a press release that our businesses were to shut in four months time. I mean, it was the cruelest way to put someone out of business. And can I say from up till now, we've heard nothing from the government, from either minister. No one's got the guts to come out here and, and talk with us and, and confront us and explain why this is happening. And, uh, you know, this has got nothing to do with the Great Barrier Reef. Where we actually net our fish is 80 kilometres from the Great Barrier Reef. We, we net along the shorelines in creeks and rivers that are lined with mangroves and full of mosquitoes and sand flies. It's not, not the reef at all. But certainly that's the picture they want to paint, uh, certainly for their electorates in the middle of Sydney. Not going to do them any harm to say that they're saving the Great Barrier Reef and who cares about some net fishermen up in North Queensland. I'd have to say the fishermen have virtually been in a state of mourning since this has been announced. And because this announcement was just like being told that there's a death in the family. We get out of bed each morning to go out and catch fish on behalf of the consuming seafood public of Queensland. We enjoy doing that, we get a thrill out of it. Uh, and, and is a great demand for it. This is all going to stop for nothing. No reasoning, no science. We just had no warning about this. It's, it's, um, so and where it's do we shocking. go from here? It's shocking. Yeah, look, no one knows. I mean, the state government Sierra, has set up a task force that's... Yep. Please go, keep going, Neil, keep going. Uh, the state government set up a task force that's supposed to be looking at how they're going to look after us fishermen. This task force has met several times and we, Senna and I, have actually presented to them. But, you know, they're supposed to put out communiques. They had a meeting several weeks ago. We still haven't got a communique on it. They met again last Friday. Still no warning. Us fishermen are just sitting out here saying, what's happening to us? What are you going to do to us? Where's the future? Certainly where's the future of Sienna and others? other uh, next generation fishers and they're the ones that we're really concerned about here. Yeah, let me bring in Sienna because I mean, I'm, I'm looking at you with your dad and I, and I look at farming families that I know personally too. There's intergenerational um, farmers and, and fishermen and livestock more generally. I mean, it's a wonderful tradition to have, but you're now looking at your dad and your livelihood's gone. How has the community reacted? What, what level of support are you getting uh, up in your community? Oh, the community was equally as devastated as what we were when we found out about this announcement. It took a few days for us to actually come to terms with it. And by the end, Dad said, we are not accepting this decision and we are not going down without a fight. So he decided to hold a protest rally here in the Burdekin. We had over 150 boats be towed by vehicles from Home Hill to Air, and over 400 people attend our public meeting in Air, rallying their support for us. We had over a dozen speakers, which not only included 
my partner Dale and I as the next generation of professional fishers that will be put out of business but we also had mm. boat builders that are going to be impacted, outboard dealerships, ice suppliers. We had other primary industries talk, cane farmers, all primary industries are under attack under these UNESCO recommendations. We also had our respected local Aboriginal elders talk how they were never consulted about this decision yet. Um, they have ownership over the land and sea rights. Uh, it was fantastic to get so much support and I truly mean it. We would not be here without the support of the community. Right, the Burdick and Shire Council, yeah. I'm going to run out of time, Sienna, Neil. Neil, is there a website, is, is there a petition? Where can my viewers go and support you? Look, um, yeah, the QSIA, the Queensland Seafood Industry Association website, jump on there and have a look. Uh, download our video that tells the full story and, uh, yeah, get in there and uh, help us and let's bring, let's bring these we'll gutless politicians. We'll come back to this, I promise you. Neil Green there and Sienna, uh, head to the Sky News website. You'll get all the information there as well.